The following is a Kingfisher Media production. Hey guys, you're listening to the In the Blood podcast. I am your host, AC Bergen Fisher, and thank you so much for listening, whether you are a new or returning listener. I'd like to invite you to find a quiet place where you consider what's being shared with an open mind and a receptive heart. Before we begin, though, the following disclaimer. I am not a therapist, and nothing presented here should be considered as therapy. If you feel that therapy would be beneficial, please seek out a licensed therapist who you trust. Hey guys, I think today I'm going to forego the regular announcements, not because nothing is going on, but just because in all honesty, I'm not in the mood. So I thought, let's just go where the spirit leads me today. What I wanted to talk about today was something that I I think at different times in life we're all faced with, and that is that question of when exactly is it time to say goodbye to somebody that is close to us? Now, this isn't something that's limited to the realm of friendship or romance or family. This is just any time you're dealing with another person who matters to you. If you find yourself questioning, like, is it time to say goodbye? I think that there's a a, a few ways where we can tell without just relying entirely on our gut when or if it's time to actually pull the trigger, as they say. So I think the the first thing is that your needs aren't being met or even worse, your needs are being dismissed. You know, and it's, it's not that I think that one person is ever capable of fulfilling all of our needs, but I think that within every specific relationship, we have specific needs that can only be filled by that relationship. So if the things that you are looking for, you're not finding, and I don't mean, you know, like you're going through a rough patch. I mean, like every time you go to the well, the well is dry. That's when I I think it's safe to say, you know what, my my needs aren't being met. I don't think they're ever going to be met without some drastic changes. And unless the other person is willing to or capable of instituting these changes, we're just going to keep on going back to a dry well. And at a certain point, you just have to say, look, this is what I'm dealing with. I can't keep on basing my approach on the potential of the situation. I have to base things on the reality of the situation. I think even worse than just not having our needs met, you know, (laughs) I I, I use the word just loosely because it's a pretty big thing. But when we find ourselves in one of those situations where it, it isn't just a case of our needs not being met, it's a case that our needs are being actively dismissed. And the reason that I find this so problematic is that it could be argued that if somebody's not meeting my needs, it's just because they're they're not aware of them. I haven't communicated them correctly. The the person just isn't wired in such a way where my needs are visible. But when somebody actually dismisses my needs, then I know for sure that they have seen my needs. They have acknowledged that these needs exist and or are important to me. But they have communicated that these needs, all of that in mind, are not at all important to them. When you're faced with a person like this, I think based on that one point alone, you know what? It's time to just cut them loose. 
Yeah, I, I lived in in the nineties in in Vancouver, and there was a, a local pawnbroker. He had um, television commercials, and his name was the captain. You know, like a ship captain. And at the end of every commercial, he would say "aye aye" and "goodbye." And when you're dealing with somebody who isn't meeting your needs and or is dismissing them, that's the phrase I think that needs to ring through your ears. Aye, aye, and goodbye. Or like they say in the South, don't let the door hit you where the good Lord split you. (laughs) I think the next point to consider is if you're faced with a situation where the, the needs that we're talking about, they're met by everyone except for the person in question that that special somebody that you're trying to relate to you know whether it's your friend your wife your your, your sibling a parent even perhaps if every time you have specific needs of of that relationship and you find yourself having to go use another relationship as a crutch just to make sure you can hold yourself together I think it's time to start asking, you know, like, what is the actual value of this relationship? Why am I going back to this empty well like constantly? And then every time I'm thirsty, it's, I'm, I'm going to other places to have that, that, that thirst quenched. You know, I talked a few episodes ago about how to determine if you're engaged in a high quality relationship. I think that one's worth giving a listen to because if you're in a low quality relationship and it's a a relationship that is consistently low quality, where the only way that you can cope within the confines of that relationship is to use every other relationship in your life as a crutch, just to keep yourself functional. Ooh. I, I, I think you got some hard questions to ask yourself at that point. Again, is it time for the I, I and goodbye conversation? You know, sometimes too, we, we find ourselves thinking, okay, may, maybe I just need to ask for a little bit more than I'm getting. And there's nothing wrong with that. I think that's actually like a pretty healthy approach because again, that person that's important to you, if they are not aware of how you're feeling within this relationship, if they're not aware that you have expectations of them that are being disappointed, if they're not aware that you have specific needs that are not being specifically addressed, of course you should have a conversation. Of course you should ask for more. Of course you should tell them, look, like I'm not getting what I need. I'm starving here. But when that conversation leads to more conflict, more dismissal, or more distance emotionally between the two of you, again, like, what are you doing here? I would argue that it, it, it's time to start doing, again, some very, very serious thinking about whether it is, in t- fact, time to have that goodbye conversation. You know, goodbye doesn't even have to be permanent. It could just be goodbye for a season, goodbye for a couple of years, goodbye until something major changes with one of us, whether it's a case of you become more capable of meeting my needs or my needs change and I end up being able to approach you in a way that works for you, whatever. But for right now, it may be time for us to part ways, you know? This next one I kind of struggled with. I wasn't sure whether or not to include it, but I ultimately decided to put it in because I think that, well, I'll I'll just, I'll just read it through. When your support system is all in agreement that this person in question needs to go, I think that you need to take a long, hard look at the reasons why everybody seems to be seeing a negative where you're seeing either a positive or a neutral or a I'm not sure. The reason I struggled on whether or not to include this is I was thinking about, well, there were times where my whole support system was really, really upset. 
you know, well, ever since you got together with so-and-so, we haven't seen you anymore. And I realized that, you know what, this is all like young people stuff. And at this stage in life, I'm not dealing with young people stuff so much. So, I mean, if, if, if you've got a support system that you trust, their credit rating is good with you. And like all of them are getting together and saying, Hey, we're not trying to be jerks here, but this person is a useless appendage in your life. Cut them loose. Don't turn on all of these quality people in favor of a low quality person. Consider that the high quality people might know what they're talking about. They may be approaching you not to antagonize, but rather to support. They genuinely support because they care about you. And with that understanding that they are there not making trouble, or at least not with the intent of making trouble, hear them out. Not to say you have to necessarily like blindly follow what they say, but hear them out. Hear their reasons. Consider those reasons and see, like, are are these people mentioning things that you've been also noticing but you haven't wanted to admit out loud? Maybe they're shining lights in dark corners that you've been content just to ignore? You know, your your support system, well, I think it's all in the name. They are there to support you. Quite often as well, I think we stick out a relationship long past its expiry date just because we feel obligated to it. Maybe it's become a habit, you know, it just I'm, I'm so used to having this aggravation, this disappointment, this whatever in my life. I don't really know what life looks like without this. I'm afraid that if I walk away, I'm just going to keep crawling right back. So maybe there's no point walking away. I'm not ready to break the habit. Maybe I feel like I owe something to them because, you know, they've been there for me in the past. We've got a shared history. They've been good to me. I mean, maybe not recently, but I can remember a time where I didn't feel this way about that person. And we spent a lot of time together. And I think anytime we we invest time in developing a habit, we invest time building a life together, or at least building an experience together with another person, it can be really, really hard to just wash our hands of all that time that we've spent. You know, like, I, I don't know how you are, but for me, I'm one of those weird people. Like if I go to the grocery store and there's a long lineup, if I stand in the lineup for a certain amount of time and I'm getting triggered and I don't want to be there anymore and the line's not moving quite often, the only reason I don't just leave is that if I leave, then I will have wasted all this time I've already spent standing there. And what a silly reason to stick around, you know, just because I don't want to waste the time I've already stood around. And, and I'm not saying that this is the only reason why people stick it out. But if it is your only reason for sticking it out in this situation, not a case of why well, I, I have a reasonable expectation that things will improve or I'm hopeful that changes around the corner. It's just a case of literally like, look, I put in this much time. I'm not walking away from that investment. In my opinion, that's a terrible reason to stick things out with another person. They got to give you something to work with. And the fact that you've been sitting there looking at them for a whole lot of years, I'm sorry, that doesn't really seem like anything substantial to work with. While we're on the topic of time, I, I think you need to, well, not just you, I guess me too, all of us, we need to consider that if we have wasted a lot of time trying to work things out, and I'm, I'm not saying we've invested time because I, I think that the distinction is time wasted is just like you, you put in the hours. You've had the conversations that go in circles. You've asked for things that don't happen. You've waited for change that is never going to come. That is a waste. An investment of time is when 
okay, maybe the situation isn't fixing itself as quickly as you would like it to, but the progress is noticeable, even if it is slow. Even if you have days where it's one step forward, two steps back, the overall theme of the relationship is gradual progress. That's an investment scenario. And at that point, it's up to you to decide, okay, is this investment paying off in a way that makes me feel like it's a good use of my time? If not, you might want to revisit the whole, maybe I've been wasting my time option. But I mean, wasting a lot of time again, you know, just like that example I used of standing in the grocery store lineup. Like if you feel like you're wasting your time trying to work things out and they're not getting worked out, you know what? Maybe your time and energy would be better used somewhere else. This next one. Oh God, I've been there. I've been there a couple of times and I, I was talking to Janelle, who you, you might remember was a guest on last week's episode. And she said, well, this is when she knew for sure that well, not the only reason, but one of the reasons that she knew for sure it was time to start plotting her escape from her ex was when she woke up one day and realized that if she was being honest with herself, she didn't actually like her partner anymore. I've been there too. It's not like the change comes suddenly, but I think sometimes the realization comes suddenly where one day you feel like, okay, I'm, I've, I've got the energy to do the work. I'm willing to look for the good in this other person. I can see the silver lining on the dark cloud. And then you go to sleep and you wake up the next morning. And your first thought when you look at this person is like, who the hell are you? What am I doing here? I can't stand you. You know, like my, my, my mom says when she's dealing with somebody, she doesn't like, I just want to erase your face. <laughs> You know, if you get to that point where it's like you, you look at this person that you're in a relationship with and you, you want to erase their face. I, I don't know what else to say. Like, I, you don't have anything of value to work with at that point, especially like if you combine all of these things together and more often than not, it, it's not like you got a clean sweep on, on this list. But you've got some combination of them, you know, between your needs not being met or being dismissed, your needs being met by everyone except for the person in question, asking for more, leading to conflict, dismissal, distance, your support system agreeing that the person needs to go, obligation, habit, time spent, these are your reasons for staying, time wasted, not invested, trying to work things out. You combine all that with, I don't like this person anyways. I, there is absolutely zero chance that this is going to turn into a high quality situation, at least not in a timely manner and not without some time and distance where one or both parties can really, really think about, okay, like, do I even want this anymore? There is one more point, and this, this last point, I think this is a standalone point in a sense, because whereas any of these other ones you might be able to work past. If you've got the right combination of these or the wrong one, however you want to look at it, you may be able to think, okay, I can still see some, some value in working on this relationship. But this last one, if they are abusive, you need to go. Full stop. Now, this one point I don't want to expand on by myself. And the reason is... Because so many of you actually really seem to enjoy the conversation I had with Janelle last week. I want to have her back next week to have a conversation about what it means to part ways with somebody who is abusive. What the thought process is, what the trap looks like. Like, How did you end up in the situation where you are being abused, where you're even having to have this internal dialogue? I think I'm going to leave things at that for now. Until next week, my friends. Much love. <laughs>